breaking news. Welcome to 12 News at Noon. I'm Lane Alter. That breaking news comes as the affidavits containing details of the case of the two Kansas women missing in Oklahoma have been unsealed. Just hours ago, investigators gave an update on the case of Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly, who they now say were murdered. Our own Max Dutton has been in the area today and got the affidavits from the courthouse in Texas County, Oklahoma and reports back to us now on what he's learned, Max. Yeah, and Lane, this shows you just how desolate this area is. We're here about five miles away from where that accident first took place. This is known as the Four Corners area. Now, Jillian, uh, Jillian Kelly, Veronica Butler were supposed to meet here at 10 a.m., but they did not make it there. They're actually, their vehicle was found about five miles north of where we're at right now. The signal is so bad out here that we actually had to move because we had SOS phone signal. Now this affidavit has a lot to break down here, so stick with me on what, we, what we're, we're taking away here. Now Butler was in a custody battle with Tiffany Adams. Tiffany Adams is the grandmother of Butler's ex-husband, Wrangler Rickman. So they're in a custody battle and Butler had a normal supervisor. She's preferred, her name is Cheryl Brune. She was unavailable, so she contacted Kelly to do the supervising. That's what that relationship was developed. Brune later then said she was available to supervise, but Adams told her to take a couple weeks off. An interesting note there. Now, Butler told Adams, as we said, 10 a.m., they were going to meet right here. Police did not find the, the car here. They actually were contacted by family members after they found the car those five miles away, as we mentioned. They found evidence of severe injury, blood on the roadway, Butler's glasses in the roadway, a broken hammer, and a pistol magazine all found. That was found in Kelly's purse, but not the pistol itself. So clear uh, evidence of a crime right off the bat. Now, OSBI interviewed the daughter of Cora Twombly. She's referred to as CW in this affidavit. Now, CW is 16 years old, said she believed Adams, Colin, Cole, and Paul Grice were involved in the deaths and that Adams had provided burner phones. CW said the group was involved in an anti-government group here in the area called God's Misfits. They actually had regular meetings at the Twombly's. Now, Cora and Cole came back from the day of the murder at 12 o'clock. This is two hours after they were supposed to meet at this location. Cora and Cole Twombly told CW, that their daughter, to clean the truck and that she did not have to worry about Veronica Butler ever again. Now, before that, Cora and Cole actually blocked the road to divert Butler and Kelly to where Adams, Cole, and Grice were. That's when the murder happened. So they were supposed to be at this location where we're live currently. They were then diverted to Adams. That's when the murder takes place. CW also confirmed with the OSBI that an attempt to kill Butler happened in February of 2024 in Hugoton, but Butler did not leave a house. A previous attempt to kill Butler happened back in February of 2024, just months ago. Now, Adams, also through the affidavit, we learned she bought three prepaid cell phones from the Walmart on February 13th in Guymon, Oklahoma. All three of those phones were pinged in the area where the car was located, then turned off and turned back near a dam 8.5 miles away. They found that dam just eight and a half miles away, as we mentioned, from the location of the cars. The dam had been dug into, they had hay, and that's the last spot those phones were pinged. All of this evidence that we just brought you up from the affidavit is why these four arrests were made. These four people were charged with murder, among other charges. Now, we were at a press conference earlier this morning. Here's what other law enforcement officials had to say. From the, from the get-go, once we arrived on scene, that and, and we gained a little bit of information that we, we felt this wasn't a random bill, all right? We, uh, we felt that with some of the information coming in that it was, it was more targeted and we started, started to look in those, those areas that we were pointed to. And now we asked OSDI today as well if they could confirm that those two bodies were Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly. They said they still cannot confirm that, but they did confirm both of those women are now dead. They have confirmed that. We're still waiting to hear when those identifications will happen. Lane. Max, be sure to tune into 12 News this evening for more coverage of this developing story as 12 News spends more time looking over the documents for more details.